one year on YouTube. That's what we're doing today. Now one year on YouTube isn't a very long time, it's nothing to brag about, but there is a lot that I've learned in the last 12 months and I'm just super excited for this journey and I really do think there's a future for me on this platform. And today I just wanna to talk about some of those things and be transparent with you guys with the future of this channel and what I've learned from being on YouTube for an entire year. <laughs> I, I'm not the good at going like down that when I like I go down I'm good at going down that bank when I'm ready but when I'm not ready I just like immediate I like I go I bail I I, I do, I'm not like what I mean to say is like even if I I can't get lucky on that bank if I'm not ready so it's like I can only drop in on that bank good if I'm ready, so. So you gotta be ready? Yeah. You gotta stay ready? Yeah. I have expressed in the past that I've learned and gotten to where I am in my professional career, not on YouTube, because of YouTube. It's a great platform to really get a lot of resource for information that might not be at your disposal otherwise. So it's kind of why I jumped on YouTube is because it's such a great platform to get information. It's really provided me with so much great opportunity, in my career and personal life and all sorts of stuff. So December 2019 was the beginning for me to really get on YouTube and I committed to posting a video one time every week for an entire year. And now we're here in December 2020. Now it took me a really long time to start this channel and to really start committing to YouTube and uploading content and creating a regimented schedule for myself and a lot of that is just because of insecurities and because of the general perception of how skaters perceive YouTubers. So I guess, you know, I don't want this video to be like a motivational video to get you on YouTube. That's not what this is. This is just my experience and how I've taken it. And I constantly try to treat every video with that. I don't want to be like, here's the right and wrong way to do things. Here's my experience. I also don't want to create some YouTube persona or personality because then I have to keep up with that. So those are all things that I try to consider in every video is just be resourceful. And I'm trying to make the most of your guys' time. This video may be an exception because it's just my journey on YouTube, but normally in my videos, I try to provide some sort of value. There's a lot of different YouTubes. Some are just about negativity. Some are just shock value. Some are just, you know, just watch me. But my point on this channel, which I'm constantly going to you know, try to keep at its core is a resource. I want this to be a resource channel for skateboarders in general, but it's not just skateboarding. We touch upon mental health recently. We touch on DIY, we touch on home decor, all sorts of different stuff within the skateboarding culture. And really that's what it is about. It's about the culture within skateboarding, which is kind of why I had the zine before this channel, which was typical culture. It was, so it really does marry into the same thing, but now I'm just honing in to what I really want to do. And that is just have a resource, have a platform to explain things and, and, and not a right or wrong way, but in a perspective way, a genuine, authentic perspective without any weird personality. As of right now, I have 9,000 subscribers and that is amazing. I'm so honored that within the last year, I've been able to gain the subscriber count that I have and that you're here watching this video. I really appreciate all of you, so thank you very much. And 
sometimes I see comments like this guy should have way more subscribers and then recently I saw a comment that said well if he made more trendy content he would have a lot more subs he's just making underground content and I do agree with that but I also don't want to be at the mercy and disposal of the YouTube algorithm so for me I'm constantly just trying to remind myself and remember like the integrity and why I made this channel is to create a resource and to have my own place to create creative content I don't want to just make content that I know is going to perform and do well and I think that's a constant you know, a battle that every creator on YouTube or any platform really has is, you know, you're at the mercy of an algorithm, but you also have this content that you want to make. And I think it's about finding that sweet medium spot, and that's what I'm trying to do. So, yes, I don't make super trendy content, but I also make content I think everyone can find valuable. And it's just going to take me a lot more time. I do want to grow this channel, but at the same time, I do want to remember its core is for me to just have a creative place to really make the content that I want to make. And if I switch to that content where I'm now at the mercy of the algorithm and what does good, I'm no longer really creating the content for me, I'm creating it for you. And don't get me wrong, I wanna create content for you, but at its core, I have to wanna make it. Now personally, I don't really love those YouTubers that give you their whole shtick like, power through it and if you follow your dreams you'll get exactly to where you want to be like I, I don't believe any of that shit but one thing that's been really ringing in my head quite a lot lately and I think it's very true is be a foreigner within your own industry I think that I think that one really does hit home One of the key things I think you can take away from that quote is that you don't have to follow the stereotypes. You don't have to follow the identities and all the other things that are associated with something just because that is the thing that you love and you've committed your life to. In my case, it's skateboarding. Being a YouTuber on skateboarding obviously has its own little connotation, but my point being is that you're always gonna deal with haters, but if you create your own identity and you create your own path, you know, they're kind of just hating because they're sort of just in line, if that makes sense. You're, you're not in line and they don't like that because you're just not following their rules. You're breaking the rules. I think you should always break the rules, especially if the rules are stereotypes. Now, something else that I've learned over the course of the last year being on YouTube is that I used to always think, okay, this is where I wanna be, but I didn't really think about how and what I need to do in order to get there. And I think being on this platform really has allowed me to take that step back and think, okay, what is it that I need to do in order to get to where I need to be? And that is just something I'm constantly trying to think of. And I think my path now is creating this community, you and the people that are a part of this channel. I really believe that we are creating more of a community and more of a overarching group than just me talking to someone behind the screen. What's your um, favorite part about YouTube? Is that it makes good content. YouTube makes good content? Mm -hmm. Like the people on YouTube, they make good content? Yeah. It's probably my favorite part too. You wanna give me some uh, advice? Uh, build the board. Build the board. Advice, build the board. What about advice for my YouTube channel? Uh, I don't know. You don't have any advice for me. You gotta have something. You're the future. I'm not. Yeah, you are. And I have the hiccups, that's why I'm not. Hiccups. Alright. You got a legit excuse. <laughs> you wanna go skate this board? Yeah.